Hi guys, moving along to learning outcome number two, we're going to be talking about the nervous system divisions. We already mentioned on the previous learning outcome how the nervous system is going to consist of these two major divisions, which are the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. And they will carry out these complex arrays of tasks that it will allow you to sense various types of sensations such as smell, it will allow you to produce speech, and it will even allow you to remember past events. In addition, it also provides signals that will control the body movements, and also it regulates the operation of these internal organs. These two systems, they will definitely communicate with each other and with the body to maintain homeostasis, which is very important. These diverse activities, they can be grouped into three basic functions, which are the sensory input, the integrative control, and the motor output. Now, the sensory function is going to be made up of sensory receptors that will detect these internal stimuli, such as increase in blood pressure and the external stimuli, such as, for example, raindrop landing on your arm. And these neurons are called sensory or afferent neurons, with an A, that will carry this sensory information into the brain and the spinal cord through what we call the cranial and the spinal nerves that are located in the peripheral nervous system. Now, the way that I remember that afferent is for sensory information as it starts with an A, so the information is going to be arriving in the central nervous system. Next, we have the integrative function, where the nervous system is going to process the sensory information that's arriving in the central nervous system by analyzing it and storing some of it, and then by making decisions for these appropriate responses to these sensory informations. And this activity is known as integration. An important integrative function is, for example, perception which is going to be the conscious awareness of a sensory stimuli. So you are aware of that stimuli that's arriving at the central nervous system. And perception occurs in the brain, not at the spinal cord. Many of the neurons that participate in this integration are what we call interneurons. Inter meaning between neurons. Therefore, neurons that are going to interconnect with other neurons and with axons that extend for only a short distance and contact nearby neurons in the brain or spinal cord to set up this complex circuit board of the central nervous system. And we will see this in the next few slides. The vast majority of these neurons in the body are going to be interneurons, meaning that they connect neurons to neurons. Lastly, we have what we call the motor function, which means that once the sensory information is integrated, the nervous system may elicit an appropriate motor response, such as, for example, a muscle contraction or a glandular secretion, which we have seen already. The neurons that will serve this function are what we call the motor or efferent neurons with an E. And motor neurons, they carry information from the brain toward the spinal cord or out of the brain and spinal cord to these effectors which are what we call the muscles and the glands, through the cranial and spinal nerves. So they will exit the brain and the spinal cord through the peripheral nervous system, which are the cranial and the spinal nerves. Now, the stimulation of the effectors by the motor neurons will cause, for example, muscles to contract and also the glands to secrete their products. And the way that I remember that the motor neurons are also called efferent neurons with an E is because E stands for exit. So they exit the brain and the spinal cord and they will go to the effectors, which can be, like I said, the muscles or the glands. So in this image, we can see the sensory input where in this example, the skin is sensing the temperature of the water. We will have a sensory receptor that's going to be located at the tip of the finger over here where the water is hitting. And this information, if it's strong enough, 
it will travel through this route over here, which we will see later on. It's going to be the dendrite of this neuron. And then from here, it will go on to the central nervous system, which we will see on the next slide. On this slide again, we can see the sensory endings at the tip of the finger. This information will travel through this dendrite all the way to the central nervous system, which includes the spinal cord. From here, it will go up to the brain. Once it reaches the brain, then it will integrate this information. So this is why the second step is what we call the integrative control. And once this information is processed in the central nervous system, this will lead to a motor response or a motor output. And the red neuron over here is representing this motor response, which will come down from the brain, pass through the spinal cord, and then exit, go all the way to the tip of your finger to remove your hand in case the water is hot. So this is your motor response, and we will see on the next slide as well. So once that information again is processed in the central nervous system and integrated, then this will cause a motor response, which will, in this case, allow you to adjust the temperature of the water. And this is how you're able to interpret the information that initially was received by the sensory receptors that were on the tip of the finger. Let's now take a closer look at the sensory and motor functions of the peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system is going to be divided into what we call a somatic nervous system and an autonomic nervous system. The somatic nervous system of the peripheral nervous system will consist of sensory neurons that are what we call somatic sensory neurons. And these, they will convey the information to the central nervous system from the sensory receptors in the skin that we saw on the previous example, also of the skeletal muscles, the joints, and then also from receptors for the special senses, which are vision, hearing, equilibrium, taste, and smell. And these somatic sensory pathways, they're involved in the input of information to the central nervous system for the integration center or the processing center, which we saw on the previous example as well. The somatic nervous system will also consist of motor neurons, which are called somatic motor neurons. And these will convey, therefore, information from the central nervous system to the skeletal muscle only. And these somatic motor pathways, they're going to be involved in the output of information from the central nervous system that will therefore result in a muscular contraction, more specifically, a skeletal muscle contraction, because these motor responses, they can be consciously controlled. Therefore, these actions are going to be voluntary. So you're voluntarily performing these actions. Now, the way that I remember, every time I see the word somatic, I think about skeletal muscle. So it's going to be an input that will result in movement of skeletal muscles only. Now, the autonomic nervous system of the peripheral nervous system also has the sensory and motor components. However, the sensory neurons are going to be called autonomic sensory neurons, also visceral sensory neurons, because they will convey the information to the central nervous system from the autonomic sensory receptors that are going to be located primarily in the visceral organs, which include the smooth muscle organs in the thorax, the abdomen, and the pelvis. And therefore, the autonomic motor neurons, they will convey the information from the central nervous system to the smooth muscle, the cardiac muscle, and the glands and they will cause these muscles to contract, the glands to secrete their substances. And because its motor response are not normally under conscious control, then this action is going to be involuntary. So the action of the autonomic nervous system is involuntary, and the actions of the somatic nervous system are voluntary. Now, the autonomic nervous system can be divided even further 
there are mainly two subdivisions and then we have a third subdivision as well. The two main subdivisions are what we call the sympathetic and the parasympathetic divisions. And with a few exceptions, the effectors are going to receive nerves from both divisions and usually the two divisions are going to have opposing actions. So for example, the sympathetic neurons, they are going to increase the heart rate and therefore the parasympathetic neurons, they will slow it down. And in general, the sympathetic division, it helps support the exercise or emergency actions. That's why it's called the fight or flight responses. And the parasympathetic division will control the rest and digest activities. Now, because the sympathetic division is actually the major regulator of the smooth muscle of the cardiovascular system, it's going to have this wider distribution as the blood vessels are going to be located everywhere in the body. So therefore, you can see how the sympathetic nervous system will act everywhere in the body. And the parasympathetic division is the major regulator of the smooth muscle of the digestive and the respiratory systems, which are both derived from the embryonic gut tubes. So that's why they are both under the parasympathetic division influence. And then we have a third subdivision of the autonomic nervous system, which is what we call the enteric nervous system. And it's called the enteric nervous system because it means that it's the brain of the gut. And it will consist of over 100 million neurons that will occur throughout most of the length of the gastrointestinal tract. That's why it's called the brain of the gut. And the enteric nervous system also has both sensory and motor components and it can operate independently, but they can communicate and they're going to be regulated by other branches of the autonomic nervous system. So sensory neurons of the enteric nervous system are going to monitor the chemical changes within the GI tract, as well as the stretching of the walls, and the motor neurons of the enteric nervous system, they're actually going to govern that contraction of the GI tract smooth muscle that will help to propel the food through the GI tract. And these neurons also control the secretions of the GI tract organs, such as the acid from the stomach or the endocrine cells, which secrete hormones. And like the other two main subdivisions, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system, the enteric nervous system is also involuntary. Here we have a map of the nervous system organization. As you can see, we're going to have three different types of receptors. We're going to have the visceral sensory receptors. We're going to have the special sensory receptors. And we're going to have the somatic sensory receptors. The visceral, like I said, has to do with the viscera, so the organs. So these will monitor, for example, your internal organs, including what we call the cardiovascular, the respiratory, the digestive, the urinary, and the reproductive systems. The special senses, remember I said, has to do with smell, taste, vision, balance, and hearing. And every time you hear the word somatic, think about skeletal muscle. So they will monitor, especially the skeletal muscles, but they will also monitor joints, skin surface. They will also provide sensation of pain, temperature, for example. And all these receptors are located in the peripheral nervous system. Once they receive the stimulus, they will send the information up to the central nervous system that contains the brain and the spinal cord through these afferent neurons. Remember, afferent starts with an A, so the information is arriving in the central nervous system. Once it reaches the central nervous system, either the brain or the spinal cord, this information is going to be processed. Where is it going to be processed? In the central nervous system, where the integration will occur. Once this information is processed, it will leave the central nervous system through the efferent division. So it's going to cause a motor command. And then we have two different types of systems. We're going to have what we call the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. The somatic nervous system will send the information directly to skeletal muscle to perform muscle contraction. And this is 
voluntary. The autonomic nervous system, like I said, is going to be divided into parasympathetic and sympathetic. These are the two main divisions. Remember, we have a third division, which is called the enteric nervous system. But the two main ones are the parasympathetic and the sympathetic. And they will have an influence in the contraction of the smooth muscle, the cardiac muscle, and also the secretion of the glands. And these are what we call your effectors, in addition to the skeletal muscle as well.